Hey everyone, Justin Waldron here with Waldron's Woodworks located in Dameron, Maryland. Um, today I'm going to put together a video for really first time users of Spark Robotics CNC line for the wood routers. Um, first of all, congratulations on the purchase. I'm going to go through surfacing your spoil board, a um, little bit in planet CNC so you can get started and then um, creating the file to surface the spoil board. So we'll get started. Now we'll look at identifying the different parts of the machine in order to get started. Also the items that are necessary and then a few of the maintenance items that will be needed. Alright now we're going to take a look in Planet CNC. Um, so when you first launch Planet CNC your screen may look like this where it's dark so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to connect our controller. And so you should see your left hand side light up, show some work coordinates under your machine, work, things like that. So um, it can be a little intimidating opening up Planet CNC for the first time. What does all of this mean? Um, you know, all the buttons and everything. So to put your mind at ease, um, it's an 80-20 rule. I use 20% of Planet CNC 80% of the time. So for the most part, um, the functions that you see on the screen is, is what you'll be using every day. So we'll go through a few of these. So to the left of the controller reconnect, we have our spindle. So this turns your spindle on if you're not running a program. So if for whatever reason you need to turn your spindle on, or off you can use this here. Uh, moving further on zoom in zoom out does just that or the short keys for that are F5 and F6. Along with your view here in the upper left hand side you can change your view to different views depending on you know what how you want to you view the file that you're cutting and then here where this icon is, is your open icon. So this is where you'll go and grab your G code from. Um, I typically do all of my design work inside and then put it on a flash drive to bring it out here to the CNC. So once we have our file loaded, you'll see your, um, your G code here on the right hand side. And then these are your work coordinates. So this is something that can kind of get confusing. Your machine coordinates and your work coordinates. So once you move your bit to the position where you want it, so your X and Y where you want the, um, the machine to start cutting from, you'll push X and it'll zero that. Um, and, and please don't mind these errors. This, this is actually not the planet CNC that I use for my machine. And then your Z. Once you get your Z height where you want it, you'll hit Z. Now this tells your machine where you want it to start from when you start making that cut. So to the left we have emergency stop. So if you're, you're making a cut, things aren't going the way that you, you want. Don't be afraid to put, push the e-stop. You can start back from where you stopped it, so not a big deal there. Just remember that when you push e-stop, you lose control and movement of, of um, some of the stuff here in Planet CNC. So if this is pushed and you keep trying to reconnect and nothing's happening, check the mushroom button on the left-hand side of your machine. Moving further down, move to zero. Um, if you've cut a file and you have moved your gantry out of the way, but you want the machine to return to zero, this is what you would use here. I very seldomly do that. You need to make sure that you have everything out of the way. And um, say you put a piece of stock in that's thicker than what you had before, you know, your bit could grab that, etc. But nonetheless, that, that's what this is for. And then further down, if you have the Z height touch probe, this is the icon, the button that will launch that into automation. This is also on your wireless hand wheel too. So you can use that function there. 
to the right, this is your speed at which your machine is going to cut. So if you input a bit into, let's say, Vectric at 100 inches a minute at 100%, your machine is going to cut at 100 inches a minute. You can increase the speed, decrease the speed. So at 100 inches a minute, every time you decrease the speed, of course, it's 10% or 10 inches a minute that you're knocking off. So you want to make sure that this value is set at 100% and this button to the left will go ahead and bring you right back to 100% immediately. This is your spindle speed. So this is the speed at which the spindle is going to spin. Most of the bits that you use will operate at like 18,000 RPMs. I don't touch this, I follow the manufacturer's recommendations for, for your spindle speed. But same thing here, you, you decrease by 10% and that's going to knock off 2400 RPMs. So two things to check, you know, when you load your file that both of these values are set to 100%. Moving on, you'll have inputs where it'll show your limit switches. And towards the bottom, this is your jog speed. So this is the speed that you can freely move your gantry by the touchpad here and the speed at which that'll move. This is preset with a maximum of 500 inches a minute, but you can change this value just by double clicking and inputting, you know, how fast you want to move the gantry. It's helpful when you're going to use your Z height if you don't have a touch probe. So scaling this down will make this your Z axis move slower. Your left and right on the along the X axis, this is going to move your just your your Z axis along the X axis in the left and the right. Up and down on Y does just that. It's going to move your gantry along the Y axis, and then you do have these diagonals here that you can move the machine diagonally. So the first thing that you do want to check once you're in plan at CNC and you are looking at your gantry is to see if you can raise and lower your Z and if you can move side to side with um, along the X axis and up and down along the Y axis. If you're not able to do that, we'll take a look at some steps you can take to get that squared away. Most of the time when your controller is off, your Z will lower to the table, so you may have to turn your controller off, back on, raise your Z. If you can't move from you know left to right along your X, if your um, spindle Z axis is all the way to the left or the right, you may have to move that by hand towards the center of the table with the controller turned off, then turn the controller back on and the same thing along the y-axis if you're too far off and you've hit a limit switch you may have to do the same thing there so um, you might see when you first launch planet CNC 2 that you can't do any of the things that I've talked about and it's calling for a firmware update so under machine we'll go to controller and that's where you update your firmware so in here, I don't use any of this at all, honestly. Um, under settings, one thing I do use is the wireless hand wheel. So if your wireless hand wheel isn't working, you need to check that it's enabled. And then this is located under jogging with your hand wheel. Then you OK. And so from here, we're going to move into Vectric and start designing a um, file to surface our spoil board. And we're ready to create our toolpath. So we're going to switch to toolpath commands and under our toolpath operations, we're going to go to a pocketing toolpath. So you can see that I've already flattened my spoil board 
and I had it set to take off six hundredths. Um, you can do three to start with. It's completely up to you. Um, if you are using a plenum, there's a few steps that you do want to take with your plenum. So you do want to make sure that you seal your plenum first before you do flatten it. So polyurethane, paint, something like that to seal the bottom of your plenum. Then you'll flatten your plenum using this same process right here. So we've set our cut depth. Our, stop, our start depth is at zero, so where we've zeroed our z-axis on our material. And then we're going to select our tool. So my tool is selected here, which is a two and a half inch spoil board bit. And this is where I was talking about earlier, where you input for your tool based on the manufacturer's recommendations. So total pass depth on this tool is a quarter of an inch. Um, I never run this bit at a quarter of an inch myself. My step over is 40%, which means that for every pass, the bit is going to move over 40% of its total diameter. So whatever that equates to, an inch and a sixteenth or something. But anyhow, so every pass is going to move over 40%. Our spindle speed is 18,000 RPMs. So if you change this here, this will coordinate into your, your G code. So you want to make sure that these settings are correct. Your feed rate is 200 inches a minute. My plunge rate is 100 inches a minute. And I'm going to hit apply and select this tool. So here's our tool here. Um, you can edit your passes here. So let's say that I want to take off a half an inch. I can edit my passes here and have it make as many passes as I want. So even at three hundredths of an inch, I can scale this down. Okay, so we have offset and we have raster. I personally don't like using offset. I do use my machine to um, surface slabs and stuff like that. If you use an offset toolpath, Your bit will start in the middle of the work and spiral itself out. What I like to do is use a raster tool path at a 90 degree angle, which means that your bit is going to cut 90 degrees in this direction to the surface. Now where this comes in handy is if you're using your machine to flatten, let's say, some slabs with a lot of character, maybe some curly maple, some highly figured wood. You can set this raster angle at 10 degrees. So instead of going with the grain or against the grain, you can kind of do a cross grain and um, alleviate some tear out and stuff like that. So for plunge moves, we're not going to worry about anything here. And we are going to name this our spoil board. And we're going to hit enter, which will calculate. So you can see by the 40% step over, that's what all of these lines represent. This red line means that my spindle is going to start up here. And to make the first pass, it's going to traverse all the way to this upper right hand corner before starting down. So if we want to make sure that everything looks right here, we're going to preview visible toolpaths. And this shows exactly what the machine is going to cut. And we'll, we'll slow this down a little bit. We'll reset our preview. Preview visible tool paths. And if you expand, you can sort of see up at the top that we missed some material there. So that's how we're going to flatten our spoil board. All right. Um, we can go back here too, and you can also see how long that this says it's going to take 
45 minutes. Um, it takes 15 minutes on, on my machine to flatten a spoil board with this bit. So at this point, we're going to save our toolpath. And then, like I'd said earlier in Planet CNC, I save all of mine on, a, on the USB and then take it out. Okay, so now we'll move into um, getting our bit set up, take a look at inserting the bit into collets and things like that. So here we have our collet nut and our collet. So we want to make sure that our collet nut's clean and to insert the collet, it just simply snaps into place. To remove the collet, you just pull to the side and it pops right out. So again, you want to make sure that your collet nut and your collet are clean. And then to insert your CNC bit, this is how far in the collet, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch from the top since it's a spring collet. And then we'll move into getting our spoil board put on. If you don't have one of these panel movers, um, they're the way to go. I'll have a link below to this one. Definitely saves your back. So we'll get our spoil board here in place. And then the next thing that we'll do is set up our coordinates here on the lower left datum. And this is the Z height touch probe. So as I talked about before, this will automatically set our Z height for us. Okay, so now we have our coordinate set, the lower left hand datum. Z, X, and Y are all set to zero. We have our file loaded into Planet CNC dust collectors on. Um, if you have a vacuum table you need to make sure that your vacuum table is. So now that our file has completed and the machine starts to shut down, if you look on the VFD you'll see your RPM slow. You want to make sure that this has gone to zero and blinks a few times before you think about changing your bit or getting your hands anywhere near the spindle. And we'll move into a few maintenance things with the machine. So I have a compressed gun here, compressed air gun. I ordered this off of Amazon. I'll have a link in the description to this. But blow out the side of the machine, blow out in and around the Z-axis, and then use WD-40 or some type of lubricant for your linear rails on your Z and also your X and Y axis.